I bet many of you here think that viruses are these evil creatures that can infect you and make you sick. What if I told you that there are many viruses out there? Some of them do not infect humans at all. Some of them only infect bacteria, and we call these phages. Phages are so specific to bacteria that they might be able to infect and eradicate one type of bacterial pathogen, but not another. Because of this, phages have many uses. For example, they're used in food industry to protect dairy and meat. They're used in agriculture and livestock to eradicate plant and animal pathogens. They're used in health settings to eradicate biofilm-forming bacteria. And my personal favorite, they can be used in phage therapy, that is, as an alternative to antibiotics to eradicate superbugs. What are superbugs? Superbugs are these antibiotic-resistant pathogens. They are there because of our misuse and overuse of antibiotics. Next time you go to the doctor and get a 10-day prescription of antibiotics, make sure you're following it through, because otherwise you're helping create these superbugs. In fact, superbugs are such a problem that in the United States, this graph shows you how they have been increasing drastically over the past few years. Antibiotic resistance is a problem. So now we have these superbugs that cannot be treated with antibiotics. How do we treat them? Well, phage therapy can be a solution. That is, we use phages that can specifically infect and eradicate these superbugs. But for us to use phage therapy, we need to understand how the phages work. How are they going to infect and eradicate the superbugs? The first step of a phage infection of a superbug is called adsorption. That is when the phage attaches to the bacterial cell and introduces the DNA inside the cell. From here, phages can have different types of infection. One type is called a virulent phage. A virulent phage undergoes a lytic infection where it multiplies inside the cell and then breaks it open or lyses the cell and eradicates the pathogen. Another type is a tempered phage. Tempered phage undergoes a lysogenic infection, where instead of reproducing inside the cell, the phage DNA inserts inside the DNA of the cell, or it hangs out extrachromosomally inside the cell. So with a virulent phage, a pathogen is eradicated, but not with a tempered phage. Sometimes, though, a tempered phage can be induced and undergo a lytic infection. But for the most part, tempered phage is stable, and it's not, it does not eradicate a pathogen. What does this mean for us? Well, meet John. John has a bacterial infection caused by a superbug. We cannot treat it with antibiotics. So let's treat it with phages. If those phages are virulent, they will undergo a lytic infection and eradicate the pathogen so John will be cured. However, if the phages are temperate, they will undergo a lysogenic infection and the pathogen will still remain. John will still be sick. In addition, phages can have different efficiencies of infection. What does this mean? Well, in our example from before, our virulent phage was efficient lytic. That's because, for example, it had a really fast infection or it multiplied really well. But a virulent phage could also be inefficient, and that's when there's something wrong with the infection cycle. For example, it's happening really slowly, or phage is not multiplying really well. So what does this mean for John? Well, if the virulent phage that we gave it is efficient lytic, it will eradicate the pathogen really fast and will cure John really fast. But if the virulent phage is inefficient, it might get to eradicating that pathogen, but really slowly. So 
it will take a long time to cure John, and we don't want that. But that pathogen might find a way to actually overcome the inefficient phage, and we don't really want that. So understanding the types and efficiencies of phage infection is actually very important. And they vary from phage to phage and bacteria to bacteria. So for every pathogen that we get and every phage that we have, we need to understand what is the type and what is the efficiency of the infection. And that's what we do in Matt Sullivan's laboratory. We take a pathogen of interest, a phage that can infect it, and ask what are the types and efficiencies of phage infection. And we do that by looking at all the stages of the infection with a variety of techniques and help of collaborators. For example, the first stage of infection is absorption. We can study that with absorption kinetics. During the second stage of the infection, phage DNA is making RNA. And RNA is important because it makes proteins. And proteins are what do most of the functions in the cell. We can study that with RNA sequencing. And also during this stage, the phage is trying to use the metabolism of the pathogen for its own selfish multiplication. We can study that with metabolomics. During the third and fourth stages of the infection, phage DNA is making more DNA. And phage proteins are making more proteins. We can study that with techniques such as PCR, ribosomal profiling, or proteomics. And the final stage is cell lysis, when the phage breaks open the cell. And we can study that with microscopy, which also helps us investigate the other stages of the infection cycle. Now, in the lab, we ask two very important questions. Why is a phage inefficient? And why is a pathogen resistant to phage? So I told you before that a bacteria can become resistant to antibiotics. And we call those superbugs. But a bacteria could also be resistant to phage. So we need to understand how and why that happens so we can either prevent it or find alternatives for it. For example, a phage could be inefficient or a pathogen could develop resistance against phage if the phage cannot attach very well to the cell or it has impaired absorption. It could happen that phage DNA cannot make RNA or phage cannot use the pathogen's metabolism really well. It could also be that phage DNA is not making more DNA or phage proteins are not making more proteins. And finally, it could happen that the phage is unable to lyse or break open the cells. These are not that big of an issue because, as I told you, there are many phages out there. So if we have an inefficient one, we can try to find an efficient one. Also to try to reduce the risk of pathogens developing resistance to phage, we use what we call phage cocktails. This is, instead of just using one type of phage, we use many. That way, if the pathogen develops resistance against that one type of phage, we have others that can still eradicate the pathogen. I want to end saying that antibiotic resistance is a really, really important problem and it affects us worldwide. This is a map of the world, and it shows you some numbers in all the continents. These are how many people are expected to die every single year because they have a superbug infection. By the year 2050, it is expected that more than half a million of people will have died because of a superbug. Antibiotic resistance is a worldwide problem. The time to develop phage therapy is now. Thank you. <laughs>